In the early 1600s, the Banda Islands stood as an enchanting jewel in the vast Indonesian archipelago. These remote volcanic islands were coveted for their precious spices. At the time, they were the only place on earth where nutmeg and mace were grown, and it was here that the Dutch East India Company set its sights. In 1638, Antonio van Dima, the Governor General of the Dutch East India Company, wrote a report of his visit to the islands, including the description of a horrific event. On the island of Guning Api, an enslaved woman was working in the garden when she met her demise. A huge snake grabbed her and unable to escape, the woman was strangled and then swallowed whole. The snake, reported to be about 7 meters long, 23 feet, was slow after swallowing a human and Dutch soldiers were able to shoot it and bring it to the governor general. The victim was still inside the snake. Van Dima didn't describe the species, but there was only one kind of snake in the area that matched the description and size, the reticulated python. When it comes to large snakes, the green anaconda seems to take the spotlight. Going by overall mass, they are generally considered the largest snakes in the world. The reticulated python, however, is generally considered the longest and while the anaconda has a reputation of being dangerous, there aren't any recorded deaths from wild anacondas. Though when you read about some close calls that biologists have had, I imagine there were some deaths that just weren't recorded. On the other hand, when it comes to the reticulated python, we have some much clearer accounts of fatalities. Today we are going to look at some of those accounts as well as reasons why attacks, which to be fair are rare, may start rising as time continues. Before I begin, thank you to my patrons, and thank you, dear viewer, for clicking on this video. Now, the reticulated python has a fairly large range through South and Southeast Asia. They are apparently pretty great swimmers too, and have been found far out at sea. So we are going to be bouncing around a bit when looking at some reports. Let's start in the Philippines, with research that suggests humans and retics have been coming into conflict for quite a while. In a 2011 paper titled Hunter-Gatherers and Other Primates as Prey, Predators, and Competitors of Snakes, the authors spoke about the rocky relationship between the snakes and modern Filipino hunter-gatherers. In the paper they report that, out of 120 people, 26% of adult males had survived predation attempts by reticulated pythons, and unfortunately there had been six fatalities between 1934 and 1973. There seems to be an interesting relationship between the hunter-gatherers and the snakes. The people also hunt the pythons to eat, but not only that, they also eat deer and wild pigs and monkeys, which are also eaten by pythons. So the people and the snakes were, quote, reciprocally prey, predators, and potential competitors. This gives an interesting perspective on how complex ecological interactions have long characterized our shared evolutionary history. This could also give some partial insight into why many fear snakes, as they may have hunted not only us, but our pre-human ancestors millions of years ago. No snakes specialize in primates, but some regularly predate them. For example, reticulated pythons take lorises, tarsiers, and several species of monkeys. Although I imagine venomous snakes also have a big role to play in that fear. Now again, it seems for these modern hunter-gatherer groups, most attacks occur on men, and this is presumably because they are going deeper into the rainforest for game and edible plants. And sometimes that game is the pythons. However, that's not where all the attacks occurred. One incident involved a python entering a thatched home and killing two children. It was apparently in the process of swallowing one when the father returned and killed the snake with his knife. So while some attacks happen when people are going hunting, Sometimes people encounter the snake unintentionally, and on rare occasions this can lead to death. There is an account recorded by Franz Werner, an Austrian explorer and herpetologist. The account comes from Indonesia in the early 20th century. A jeweler and some of his friends went hunting in the district of Tatan, but unfortunately for them, they were hit by a violent hurricane. The men rushed to find some shelter. The jeweler, a man named Chine, decided he would take shelter in a tree so he moved away from the others in the group and went to climb a tree, taking his shoes off first for better grip. After some time had passed though, he hadn't come down from the tree and the friends started to search for him, but all they found were his shoes and hat. Well, that's not all they found. They also found a large reticulated python, about six meters long, 
that had just swallowed something. They killed the snake and quartered it, and inside, they found Chine's body. A little over a decade later, we get two other accounts from Felix Kopstein, another Austrian biologist that published an article in Tropicia Natura. Kopstein had lived and worked in the East Indies for many years, and he reported two cases, one of a 14-year-old boy who was attacked and swallowed by a 5-meter reticulated python. Again, the boy was discovered after the snake was killed and torn open. And another adult woman had also been swallowed by another large python. These stories are second-hand accounts from Werner and Kopstein, so perhaps certain details aren't quite exact. Now, many of these accounts, it seems people were caught off guard, and perhaps they didn't even realize one of the snakes was nearby when the attack happened. But this next account is a little different and concerns an attack by an apparent pet reticulated python. This account comes from the 1930s, from Fran Buck, an animal hunter and collector who made many trips into Asia to collect and hunt animals. He wrote about a pet reticulated python in the Philippines that had escaped, and apparently this was a huge python, allegedly 25 feet long, or 7.6 meters. A bit later in this video, we'll talk about how big these snakes can get, but for now, a large snake escaped, and as you can imagine, they wanted to find it, and they did. When it was found though, it also had a large shape inside it, and I guess they figured it must have been a human, or someone realized someone had gone missing. Either way, they opened the snake, and apparently, a child was found inside, the son of the snake owner. I feel like certain details around this story are a little bit odd, perhaps sensational, like the size of the snake. Though, I do think it's possible someone was killed by a pet snake around that time, as in more recent years, people have been killed by pet reticulated pythons. In 2008, a man returned home to find his wife's body in front of their pet snake's empty tank. The python, which was apparently 13 foot long, was found in the bedroom by police. The woman seemed to have died from asphyxiation. The python seemed to have attacked when the woman had tried to give the snake medication. It was reported in the local newspaper that the woman was an experienced handler and reptile department worker at an animal shop. Thankfully, you don't hear about many pet reticulated pythons killing their owners, but considering the size they can get to, it seems they are probably not a good idea for beginners, but rather experienced herpetology lovers. And even then, there is still an element of risk. According to the book, Tales of Giant Snakes, a Historical Natural History of Anacondas and Pythons, there was an attack in 1995 in the southern Malaysian state of Johor. The victim was a 29-year-old rubber tapper who had been caught off guard. The victim was found by their brother. The brother called the police who shot the python four times, but unfortunately the man died. The snake was reported to be 23 feet, 7 meters long, and weighed about 300 pounds, or 136 kilos. At this point, I want to shift focus a little, as there are some very large size claims in some of these attacks. And when it comes to reticulated pythons, and most big snakes, we get some very large size claims. It might not be directly related to attacks, but since it's coming up, we may as well take a quick look. I guess this video will temporarily turn into a how big video. Now, there are a lot of size claims out there. But as mentioned many times before, humans aren't particularly good at estimating animal sizes and tend to overestimate with large animals, especially snakes. So we are only going to look at snakes that were measured. There is a paper from 2005 titled Predation on Sun Bears by Reticulated Pythons in East Kalimantan, Indonesian Borneo, that seems to contain the longest reticulated python measured in the wild. The team spent multiple hours sedating the snake with low dosages of drugs so they could measure the snake accurately. The python measured 6.9 meters and weighed 59 kilos. A bit light considering the length, but the python apparently hadn't eaten in months. And what about in captivity? Well, the snake known as Colossus was one of the most famous reticulated pythons ever, but their size seems to be a little difficult to say for certain. In 1951, it was apparently measured at 23 foot 3 inches, a little over 7 meters, and then a little later at 8.28 meters, 27 foot 2 inches, and he apparently weighed 133 kilos, or 295 pounds, after not eating for 4 months. He was then also apparently measured in November of the same year at 8.69 meters, 28 feet 6 inches. Pretty incredible, but after Colossus died, he was apparently measured at 7.31 meters, 23.9 feet. We also have the skeleton and skin of Colossus. The skeleton was measured at 6.35 meters, 20 foot 10 inches, and the skin measured 7.29 meters. 23 feet 11 inches in length. It seems that the previous accounts were either exaggerated or the method used to measure wasn't very accurate. There is a good chance though that Colossus may have been the heaviest snake 
especially considering in certain pictures, the snake, unfortunately, looks quite obese. We also have, or had, Fluffy, considered to be the largest reticulated python in captivity until her death in October 2010. According to Guinness World Records, Fluffy was measured on the 30th of September 2009, and she was found to be over 7.3 meters, 24 feet long. However, there was a Nat Geo show that seemed to suggest otherwise. In a show named how big can it get, Snakezilla, we get different measurements. In previous videos, I sometimes questioned the measurements of Nat Geo, but in this show, we see the zookeepers measure Fluffy using a pretty good method, placing a piece of string along the dorsum of the snake, following the curves of the body, and then measuring the piece of string in a straight line separately. And they got a total length of 6.12 meters, 20 feet, 1 inch, and she weighed 99.4 kilos, so about 220 pounds. There was also a snake named Cassius that was reported to be 8.38 meters, 27 foot 6 inches, and weighing 108 kilos, 240 pounds. However, they were later revised to be 7.7 .7 meters, 25 feet 6 inches, and weighing 118 kilos, 260 pounds. The thing is, we don't know what method was used to measure the snake, so maybe we should be a little bit cautious accepting the measurements. They also came from the Guinness Book of Animal Facts and Feats, 1982 edition. I'm not sure how reliable of a source that is, so we don't know how it was measured. Speaking of the Guinness World Records, according to them, the largest reticulated python, actually largest living snake in captivity, is a female named Medusa in Kansas City, Missouri. She was reportedly measured at 7.67 meters, 25 feet 2 inches, and was estimated to weigh 158 kilos or 350 pounds. However, it doesn't mention if the measurements were taken by an official or supplied by the people who own Medusa. And remember, Guinness World Records previously said that Fluffy was 7.3 meters, 24 feet long, but when she was measured on camera using the string method, she was 6.12 meters, 20 feet, 1 inch long. So maybe, perhaps, Medusa is actually that big, but hard to say for 100% certain. There are a few other unverified claims. Samantha from the Bronx Zoo was measured at 6.4 meters, 21 feet, and weighed 79.4 kilos. Now, those measurements are on video, but she was then estimated to have grown to 7.9 meters, 26 feet, but these measurements aren't verified. There are also counts of a 33 foot, 10 meter long python from the 1940s, but we have no remains preserved, so it's hard to verify if that's real. And you know, on the last Anaconda video, someone said I didn't do my research because there was a 37 foot long, 11 meter anaconda somewhere in South America. Well, well, here's the thing, the only source I can get on that is the 1982 edition of the Guinness World Record Animal Edition, and we have no evidence of this snake. We don't have any photographs, we don't have any bones, we don't have any skin. So I don't consider that to be verified. In fact, maybe this is a hot take, but I don't know if any living snake can exceed or even reach 30 feet. Many, many sources will say reticulated pythons and anacondas get to and exceed 30 feet, but there isn't any real evidence of this. It's all a fugazi. You know what a fugazi is? Yeah. Fugazi. It's a fake. Yeah, fugazi, fugazi. It's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not real. Right. <laughs> the very big anacondas have been recorded at 18, 19, 20 feet, and the leading expert puts their max at about 22 feet. And when we look at the reticulated python, the max verified measurement is about 20 feet 1 inch, and possibly up to 25 feet. But neither have gotten close to 30 feet, let alone exceed it. There have been cash rewards for snakes exceeding 30 feet, starting with Teddy Roosevelt in 1910, who wanted it for a pet. Then the Bronx Zoo got involved. The reward would grow from $1,000 to $5,000, reaching $15,000 in 1978, until finally peaking at $50,000 in 1980. A few years ago, I watched a documentary titled Big Snake. Originally, it came out in 1999, about a man named Robert Twigger, an Aikido instructor who learned about the cash prize and tried to go out and get a living 30-foot snake. A newspaper claimed the Taiping Zoo in Malaysia had a 30-foot snake, so Robert went there. But when he did, he asked the zookeeper if the snake was 30 feet long, and the keeper said he didn't think so. But Robert had gone a long way, so they measured the snake anyway. It was 21 feet, 3 inches long. He asked other people who worked with snakes, including the Snake Brothers, Muhammad and Hassan Ali, about a 9 to 10 meter, 30 foot python. And he got the same response, 
I don't think there are 10 meter reticulated pythons. He then hired an Indonesian poet as an interpreter and went to the Baru Island looking for snakes. And there were a lot of stories of big snakes that sometimes didn't seem so big when they found them, though they did find a 17 foot 5.5 meter python. He then went to Saram and along with the interpreter asked the local people to help him find a 30 footer or a 9 to 10 meter snake. He offered cash but he didn't tell them about the 50k reward. There also seemed to be some issues between Robert and the interpreter, Bram, as he thought they were going to catch the snake for all the wrong reasons. He also thought the people deserved a cut of the reward and that he should discuss it with them. Robert didn't but he offered about $700 for a big snake. They caught and measured a large snake that, when they measured it, was about 23 feet long, about 7 meters. The snake was then killed and eaten. The prize would stay there until 2002 when it was discontinued. Possibly because they didn't want more harm coming to wild snakes, but I'm not sure. Others have also offered rewards though. Mathis Fiorelli, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, commented under the Anaconda video about a Brazilian biologist and YouTuber who is offering a cash prize for anyone who can show him proof of a living and breathing 9 meter anaconda. And apparently the prize has been there for quite a while. There is also another YouTuber, Brian Barksick, who offers a $50,000 reward for a living healthy snake 30 feet long. You can find details about it on their channels. Now some might say that we haven't explored every corner of the various rainforests and jungles, which is true, but many people have gone searching for a 30 footer. And also, many people have captive green anacondas and reticulated pythons. And again, no official measurements of any snakes above, at, or near 30 feet. So I'm a bit skeptical. Now, maybe one day we will find a 30 foot snake. And the best contender is probably the reticulated python, but I guess we have to wait and see. Back to the attacks. The next attack happened near a luxury hotel on Indonesia's resort island of Bali. A large python had been seen in the area multiple times. One night in December, the python was spotted crossing the road near the hotel. A security guard at a nearby restaurant offered to help capture the snake as I guess the hotel and local business owners were worried about tourists. So he managed to secure the python's head and tail and he then put the snake on his shoulders. The python then wrapped around the man and strangled him to death. In the paper it reads, People watching the incident were unable to help and called the police, who came but failed to save the man. The python escaped into nearby bushes and police were still searching for it. It doesn't sound like this was a predation event, but rather the python freaked out and became defensive when it was captured. It doesn't dilute the incident though. It seems like the man was just trying to help and the fact that he picked it up sounds like he just wanted to capture it or move it rather than hurt or kill it. Now though there are earlier accounts that we've gone through of people being eaten by a python, some of the earlier sources are secondhand accounts and reports without much evidence. Some consider an attack in 2017 the first fully confirmed case of a person being eaten by a python. Akbar, a young man of only 25 years, ventured into the dense palm oil plantations one fateful Sunday to harvest the valuable palm oil. But as the sun dipped below the horizon that evening, Akbar did not return. Panic gripped the villagers as the hours turned into 24 hours. Something was terribly wrong. The villagers, desperate to find their missing friend, scoured the plantations, their flashlights cutting through the dark. Their search took an eerie turn when they stumbled upon a massive serpent. A reticulated python reported to be 7 meters, 23 feet in length. Fear gripped the villagers as they suspected the unthinkable. Had the snake swallowed their akbar? The police were summoned and a grim discovery awaited them. Cameras recorded as the python was cut open, inch by inch, revealing a grisly secret within. There, in his work attire, lay Akbar, lifeless, his fate sealed by the suffocating embrace of the colossal python. Though this is sometimes considered the first confirmed case of a person being eaten, it wouldn't be the last. The next year, a 54-year-old woman went missing one night while attending to a garden that was about half a mile from her house, but she didn't return. A search party was formed and a large, reportedly 7-meter, 23-foot python was found, and when it was cut open, a woman was inside. In October 2022, a similar incident happened with a 52-year-old woman in West Tangyong Jabung Regency, Jambi, Indonesia. She was killed and swallowed whole by a 6-meter, 19-foot, 8-inch reticulated python. Again, she was reported missing, and then after a search, a python with a bulge was found 
and when it was cut open, she was inside. It is pretty rare for pythons to attack people, though it seems that in recent years that there may have been a few more recorded attacks. Now this may just be because reporting on incidents has improved and increased, though there are some theories that attacks may increase as time continues. And why is that? Well, Indonesia and Malaysia account for 85% of global palm oil exports. The thing is, palm oil deforestation doesn't just destroy the snake's habitat, it also draws the big snakes into closer contact with humans. The palm oil plants are a magnet for rodents and other small animals that feed on the fatty, energy-dense fruit, and then the snakes come in to hunt the rats. Doug Boucher, a scientific advisor for the Union of Concerned Scientists, stated that they're not coming after us. In various ways, either directly or by our actions with changing land use, we're coming after them. He also said, you have these sudden encounters. It's not that the snakes are attacking, they're just not expecting people. The reticulated pythons are certainly powerful animals that need to be respected and treated with extreme caution. But I think it's a bit of a stretch to try and characterize them as evil creatures, especially since we don't always treat them so well either. There was a pretty disgusting case in Singapore where two men dragged a python into a market and while laughing, kicked and dragged the python before chopping its head off. And the python wasn't attacking anybody, they just did it for entertainment, I guess. According to a paper, Reticulated Pythons in Sumatra, Biology, Harvesting and Sustainability, hundreds of thousands of reticulated pythons are taken from the wild to be killed for their skins each year. They're also used for traditional medicine and many are captured and sold as pets which they are apparently treated quite badly when they are captured from the wild, so probably better to get a captive bred one if you're going to get one. But anyway, due to these reasons, it is considered to be one of the most economically important reptiles worldwide. Now, I don't particularly like the idea about snakes being killed just to be turned into a handbag, but to be completely transparent, the practice is considered sustainable, and the IUCN considers them to be of least concern. And they did do a lot of research, including going to multiple python processing facilities in Indonesia and Malaysia, where they also measured thousands of pythons taken from the wild, none of which were 30 feet, and it seems like it was sustainable, and other research papers seem to agree. But the bottom line is that while the reticulated python is definitely an animal that one should be very cautious around, as is the case with most animals, we are a much bigger threat to them than they are to us. Anyway, thanks again to my patrons, and thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day.